Are you tired of having to bargain your sleep just to watch NBA games? Or maybe you're just tired of getting disappointed by Arsenal and Man U every week and you just need something to keep your spirits alive before the hope inside you truly dies. The performances are terrible! Well, I have some good news for you. It's exciting times in British basketball right now. Two BBL teams competing in Europe, our first player to become a lottery pick in the last decade, and having just capped off one of the most exciting summers in British basketball to my recollection, there isn't a better time to get caught up in the action this BBL season. But you've been ignorant to professional basketball in this country for so long. Or maybe you're just a Brit who's brand new to the sport of basketball in general and you're scared to take the plunge. But don't you worry, my sweet little delicate flower. Zaddy's here to guide you through the league today. The BBL is the highest division of basketball in the UK. Think more like basketball's Premier League and less like the popular cosmetic medical procedure. I'm here to talk you through a brief history and some of the storylines leading up to this BBL season so that you're no longer missing out on what an exciting sport and league this truly is. Let's stop wasting time. Let's get to the defending champs. The Leicester Riders, the second most winningest club in league all-time history. Manned by the most winningest coach in league history. Former player for the Birmingham Bullets and the Riders, coach Rob Patterson. Nostra. Last season they were able to win three trophies that are available in our league, finishing with a 24 and 2 record in the regular season. Led the last two seasons by two-time MVP Gino Crandall, the Leicester Riders played a brand of team basketball they're looking to continue into this season as they take on their new challenge, qualifying for the Basketball Champions League, which is full of teams across the continent. This is not the club's first taste of Europe, but I think this group definitely has its sights set on making bigger waves this time around. However, with the loss of Gino in the offseason to the German BBL side, BG Gottenham, they'll have to adopt to a life after Gino. Oh, nice pass. Hoping that their new playmaker can come in and take the reins of this team with as little turbulence as possible. That brings us over to the second team flying the British flag for us this season, the London Lions. They've tasted league gold in the past, but with a new look and new ownership, the Lions were defeated last year in the finals by the Leicester Riders and are for sure looking for redemption this season. I guess the Lions would be like the Manchester City of our league in the sense they have all the money and this shows in the imports they're able to bring in. And in my opinion, this probably makes them easy favourites for any bandwagoning casual fans looking for a team to support. Whoa. Roasted. But they're for sure going to need that firepower heading into FIBA Eurocup, second to only the Euroleague. The Lions have managed to put together an exciting roster. Big British names. In the lane, Soko gets him up in the air, goes around, oh, Soko spins around, catches it, he goes in, he puts it out! Along with other notable guys. With Kufus with the dunk. And the accompanying foul by Whiteside. Decker is three. Wow, Sam Decker coming off the bench. Three for three. A chance now to tie take the lead. Herbon throws it down and one. All eyes are on them this season to see if they can put the league on the map. Now let's head over to Newcastle. How the mighty have fallen. Last season was the first time that the Eagles haven't made a playoff appearance since yeah. 2000. The most winningest team in league history. They have a dynasty rivalry with the Riders, which you could say mirrors that of the Celtics and the Lakers. And right now, the Eagles look a lot like the pre-showtime Lakers because they need to rebuild this year. Recruiting GB assistant head coach Mark Stutel to take over the helm and guide this franchise back to its winning ways. And while we're this high up in the country we may as well talk about our scottish friends shooting this video has been really difficult because of all the changes that are constantly ongoing and me having to like constantly update the script possibly one of the biggest changes that has basically ruined my video no longer the glasgow rocks now the caledonia gladiators with also gareth murray now retiring and no longer being a player coach we had a whole segment going on here about you know balancing the two roles and all of that is garbage now but um Congrats on a great career, Gareth. Um, and it's good to see you in a new role. The new owners of the franchise have apparently put a lot of money behind it, so it'll be exciting to see what they can do this season and going forward. Damn Scott! They ruined Scotland! The BBO is full of underdog stories this year. Teams that are making an attempt to rebrand and join the arms race that the Lions have started. And one of the most interesting stories, Manchester Giants. Last year, the franchise saw a glimpse of just how giant they could really be. After years and years of being the league's punchline, a city with a huge love for the sport, not to mention all the success across its junior program, the Giants are doing their 
best to carve out a little bit of green between the red and blue. But as we know, Rome wasn't built in a day. It's been a bump in the road. With the departure of everybody who made the success possible on the floor last season, that dream was thrown into a state of limbo. Fans were praying and waiting to see if the team's able to recapture some of the magic that they did last year. But over the offseason, they were given hope, managing to pick up Fletcher, a two-time MVP during his tenure at Newcastle, along with Dirk Williams from the London Lions, one of the league's most premier and exciting scorers teaming up with ex-London Lions coach and owner Vince McCauley. Will Vince and the gang be able to recreate last season's success in his return to the BBO and his new home? Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Another fan base that's starved and thirsty for wins are the Surrey Scorchers, only winning two games in total last season. But there is hope on the horizon in the form of new head coach Lloyd Gardner, one of the most respected coaches in the league who's seen heights of first place with the late London City Royals and resurrected the Manchester Giants. And he's clearly looking to do the same with this franchise, with a dynamic British core with the likes of Kyle Carey, Andrew Lawrence, Boban Jack Domney, Tay Ogundembe, and myself, Surrey, and me are excited to get some dubs this year. Another diehard fan base brings us to the Plymouth Patriots, the young franchise in the league since the previous Plymouth Raiders folded. Basically, Plymouth Basketball said, I'm not fucking leaving, and the Patriots were born. They started the season off looking like they were going to struggle to pick up any wins. But halfway through the year, they picked up some reinforcements and had the most exciting run of the entire season, winning eight games with some of those coming on the buzzer and late in overtime. The Patriots have managed to re-sign most of that core Cinderella group and will for sure be looking to start the season as hot as they finished the last one. The Cheshire Phoenix, a franchise that's equally as proud of their fans. These fans were lucky enough to see the Phoenix lift up some silverware when they beat the London Lions in the trophy final in Glasgow. However, success in the trophy competition didn't translate well to the regular season, where they typically stay inconsistent, picking up big wins and giving up some avoidable losses. The Phoenix have made some interesting moves this offseason by signing their own British core in Danny Evans, Will Neighbour, Jamel Anderson, David Ulf, and Michael Wacharobia. Will this be enough to guarantee them some more silverware this season? I'm sure Benny T and the boys hope so. Bristol Flyers are a team that everybody hates to play, scrapping for every possession. They're a team that makes everybody's lives difficult. Last season they achieved the most success they've had since entering the league in 2014. They even managed to make it to the second round of the playoffs last year. With a new group of faces coming in, can we expect the same brand of bull in a china shop basketball from these guys? This guy okay, finally, last but not least, maybe least, the Sheffield Sharks. I tried to bring the energy on that one for you. A team that was predicted to make the playoff finals last season, but an injury to one of their leading scorers was enough to derail any momentum they had figured out going into the playoffs. Going into the season, they'll be dealing with the departure of their captain and longest serving Shark, Mike Tuck, who last picked up a trophy for the franchise in 2016. The Sharks are a historically formidable team in this league. Resigning most of their main unit from last year, it looks like they're going to be making an attempt to have another go at it and see if they can make it over the hump that they couldn't last season. Well, there you have it. You're now all clued up on all 10 teams across the league. And now with this information, you can go and bandwagon London anyway. No shame, no judgment from me. All I ask is that you leave a like on this video if you made it this far and tell me in the comments which team you're most excited about seeing this year. Unless it's London. Then you can just carry on with your day. I was only joking, please don't. I need to please my lord the algorithm. Thanks again for watching and if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy these videos even less. So be sure to check them out and I'll see you guys in the next one.